is where we're staying. And there's Springbank. <laughs> So, finally, it's Thursday. It's eight days after we've arrived. Last Wednesday, we were supposed to do the Bartley to Bottle tour, but today we are finally ready to do it. Are you excited? So we should be doing a full day. We'll probably break it down into different videos. I'm not sure what we'll be able to record, so we'll see. 10 years. It wasn't right. <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> 22 year Hazelburn for breakfast, everybody. Slanta. 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 Slanta, Finley. I feel a little sad that you just have to watch. I'll get over it. Yeah. Prunes and dates. After many drinks. Okey finish as well. It's got quite a lot of spice on it. Like a lovely heat. We're going into the exciting barley section. Look at that. Gordo's going to take us through this. <laughs> you want to eat the barley? Yeah, but we, we need it for whiskey. People. So uh, here we have the first stage in the process of making whiskey. Barley is, uh, is quite a, a, a fascinating little gem. Um, it contains energy stored obviously from the sun, photosynthesis, all that sort of stuff. Um, and it's saved in the form of starch. Starch is a complicated sugar. Um, it's a polysaccharide. We don't want to use that starch. We want to simplify it and make it into sugars. Breakfast number two. <laughs> mm. I like the, oh, yeah. I like the first one better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so if you do have a little mm. look at it, uh, you'll see there's some rootlets growing from the bottom. Um, what's happening mm. here is that we've tricked the barley into thinking it's springtime by making it very, very wet. We've soaked it in a steep for about 12 hours. Uh, then we'll let it dry for 12 hours and we'll soak it for 12 hours again. As it starts growing, well, the husky bits. start growing out the bottom of it and they get really, really tangled and intertwined with each other. Um, so we try to keep it separate. The whole job is probably going to take one man about 45 minutes. We use, um, it's called the acrospire. The acrospire is a shoot that's actually being made inside the germ, inside the grain. Uh, we want yeah, to stop it's pretty damp. Have to deal with it. And do you know? <clears throat> do you know what type of barley is here today, uh, or what's been uh, used recently? We have been changing our barley a little bit recently um, due to supply. We were using a concerto for a few years. Yeah. That's right. Um, and then we moved on to a Diablo. Okay. And I now believe we're currently using Sassy. Okay. Sassy barley. You think barley is just barley, but yeah, you know, it's slight different changes in, in the growth. Maybe mm. uh, one type of barley has a spurt of growth, maybe after day two, um, and you really have to be very careful at that point. So there's a little bit of unpredictability, but generally speaking, they're all the same. I'm towing across the barn. <laughs> Don't ruin the barley! <laughs> so does local barley take a whole malting floor to itself? Um, or local barley will take a week of production. Uh, we use two floors. Oh, so double. Okay. And this is the second one that we're going up to now? This is the second one now. Aha. Looks all... Oh yeah, you can, you can smell the difference up here, can't you? It smells a bit like um, wet, hessian kind of a smell. No. So this is, this is brand new. This is the Springbank beachfront. <laughs> oh, look at all those footsteps in the sand. <laughs> Just does feel wrong though, doesn't it? When we came up here yesterday, there was, uh, the place was filled with smoke. What can you smell? 
Oh, wow. Whiskey. Uh, so I don't know if you can still smell it. Yeah. There's a bit of, bit of smokiness in the air. It was being heated yesterday. <laughs> Um, it's also very water sensitive. Sometimes we can oversaturate it, sometimes we don't. Um, it's just pure guess. You don't know what you're going to get in each year. Um, so when it's on the floor, it's harder to work for everyone. It blocks up machinery. Um, it doesn't dry as well in the kiln. Uh, we have so much of it, it overfills bins. Um, and these are just the tip of the iceberg um, when it comes to local barley, so we do not like it. <laughs> yeah, but we like it, so keep going. <laughs> uh, yes, partly because it's, it's a proper organic farm that it comes from. There are no pesticides used, so it has a lot of that in the fields anyway. Um, he doesn't have the same type of processing abilities as the, um, yeah. the professional molsters mm -hmm. have. Um, yeah. So we get it in in almost a raw form. Yeah. Um, he does dry it slightly for us and he'll dry it to around about the 12% that we receive it in as well. Mm -hmm. Once or twice we have taken it in and it hasn't been dried enough so we've had to put it into our own kiln to dry it then to store it up here mm -hmm. which again is more work. Wow. Remember we're doing this in between working all the other floors, laying the floors, turning the floors and everything else so it's, it's a lot of extra and, and the kiln's already the bottleneck. And the kiln's already <laughs> a bottleneck, yeah. Um, and you can understand that the marketers, the salesmen, they want to produce more. And we're just like, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. I had an idea though. You could sell local barley for £500 and when you open it, there's a coupon code that gets you 400 back. <laughs> Under the cork. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Imagine what the corks would sell for. Yeah. <laughs> Four hundred pounds. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sure people would pay five for it. <laughs> yeah. And just on on the subject then. So, if something sold for a hundred pounds, isn't seventy five of it duty taxes, whatever? Anyway, yes, or yes, very much of it. Um, we sort of look at a bottle. We like to look at the bottle, and we consider a full bottle being your full profit. Okay? Yeah. Uh, or your, your full uh, price. price. Yeah. Um, tax, cost, labour, materials is about the whole bottle and the yeah. cake is your profit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you when you see a local barley for £800 yeah. at the auction and you're thinking that you're running the company on £20 of that? <laughs> £20 of that, £800. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. £800 has almost gone to the auction site plus yeah. uh, the original buyer, yeah. 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 It's 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 not only local barley, it happens with every, oh, yeah. every special release. We had a few releases a few months back and there were queues all the way around the car park. Right. People sleeping outside with sleeping bags I'm and sure. to collect what was the big 25 one? Year old. The twenty five year old spring bank. Oh, like yeah. We had twenty two bottles. We had twenty two wow. bottles for sale. Well, there's four guys came up from London, flew from London to Glasgow. Yeah. Hired a taxi from Glasgow to Campbelltown, which must have cost enough. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Four deck chairs. <laughs> Did they buy the deck chairs here? End of February. End of February. Oh, wow. it wasn't oh, warm. They're hardcore. So right now we're standing directly above the kiln while there's a dry going on. One of the mop floors was put away this morning, yesterday morning. It was uh, smoke for about six hours and it was being dried with hot air from an oil burner. Um, this concrete block, the kiln basically goes from the edge of the roof here to the edge of the roof on the other side and from the wall to the edge here. So that's at the size. Um, there's a perforated floor down below that the mop bed is sitting on, so the hot air is just passing through and it's being exhausted. Down this end, we have another conveyor. Anything that comes out of the kiln, kiln is then dropped onto this conveyor and is carried down to the end, down the bottom down there, or further up here, and it gets dropped into each of our malt bins. We have 10 malt bins, each of which will hold around about 22 tons of malt. Um, we do have a little bit of local barley, so I can show you an example of um, everything that's in that and if you compare it to something else. <laughs> yeah. See, it's a proper tour. <laughs> <laughs> I 
But that has to be hard. Local barley. So you can see the local barley with the grain is very, very small. Yeah. Uh, there isn't much to it. You'll see everything else that's in there that is not barley. Um, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of stalks, other seeds. Um, <laughs> Sometimes we get beans in there. Don't know oh, where yeah. beans come from. Peas. <laughs> yeah. Um, Normally there always seems to be carrots, but not but in this See, there's, there's all different <laughs> bits in here, not just barley. Oh, yeah. And is that Belgravia from the last local barley? I'm sorry? Is it Belgravia from the last local barley run? Um, no. Uh, this is uh, a beer barley. Oh, it's beer? It's beer barley, yeah. This one's beer barley. Beer. Oh, God. Uh, we've been beer, using beer. beer barley for yeah. quite a few years now. Yeah, okay. Where do we throw this one? Contaminate another batch now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to spread a little bit of local barley in every other one. <laughs> oh. So you can that. Okay, yeah. So these are these are fatter, fatter barley. This is main production. So this is um, I believe the sassy called sassy barley. So sassy sassy barley. And you can see there's a huge difference in the size. Oh. Throw that down there. Well, actually, oh, hang on. Let's compare. Let's compare. So I think it's a bear barley. Yeah, bear barley, and this is. So, um, um, no, this is bear barley, and this is sassy barley, the fat one. Sassy. Uh, so that's it. Different that. name. No, that's it. No, that's the current barley for production. You can see how much how fatter it is. And so the yields a lot higher on those. Absolutely. The uh, we, expect the fat the barley. Yields, we expect the yield to be around about 390 litres per of alcohol per yeah. ton. Um, with the beer barley, I believe we're pretty lucky to get 300 litres. Yeah. Okay. Uh, quite a large difference. Yeah. Um, so Cortez made the equipment far too well, nothing ever broke down, so they weren't required to repair anything. And then the company went bust. No way. They'd supplied everyone with the machinery, uh, it worked so well, they went bust. Condenser. Ah, uh, worm tub. Worm tub. Condenser. We have uh, emptied everything into the kiln, now it's time to flavour it. Three different balls of spring van, hazel burn, spring van, and Tom Rowe. Hazel burn is completely unheated, it's dried with cotton and oil in. Tom Rowe is completely dried with uh, heat, and spring van is usually smoked for around about six hours. So I think we know, hazel burn unbeated, long row fully heated. And Springbank, a bit of both. Fresh beet over there. So wet, wet peat outside. We can see some more in here. That's a little bit. The three different types of peat that I did mention was the dried peat. Come on, walks like this are very dry. They're very dry stuff. It doesn't have a lot of smoke flavour coming from it, but it does have a lot of peat. Oh yeah, that's pretty wet. Here we have some fresh peat, it's very, very damp. This comes straight from the box. Right, oh that's fresh cut. To kill the fires, we throw in some dried peat, we establish our fire and then we smother it with wet. It keeps the temperatures low, but it gets too warm, it won't connect with those peat panels anymore. So we are trying to keep the temperature cool by doing that, we just smother everything, basically they cover the flame. We keep the fire lit, we get smoke coming through, and then goes through into the mop egg, just it's some just of dirt. the heat smoke residue is left on the mop, and then it escapes through the exhaust. Again, if you just look behind you, hazel burn is around about 30 hours of hot air, spring burn about 30 hours of air plus 6 hours of um, smoke. Long road, it's up to two full days of peat smoking. Where do you uh, source the peat? Uh, the peat currently comes from the north of Scotland. I think it's near Stirlingshire, I'm not sure. Uh, so the fresh peat road, example, really uh, bumps up the PPM. Quite Gordo, so. 
fuel pod was outside, it fell about 50 of those into the fire each shift. For two days, every eight hours, about 50 wheelbarrows. 50 wheelbarrows goes in each shift. The fire, and a little idea of what's inside. I see. This is the bottom of where we were up in the loft. <laughs> My time here is done. Well, we don't actually use the barley straight away. We can lie for maybe two months before whatever's in production comes along the line. At the moment, I think it's spring bank we're in, so bin three will be used first because that'll be the oldest. it's been belt driven. Everything in here is belt driven. Um, I don't like being belt driven. Belts break, mm. belts expand, belts come off. Just last week I was at my wits end with those belts. Um, almost every single belt came off in, oh, one, wow. in one shift. <laughs> uh, which is quite strange because it would be probably been about two years since it had last happened. <laughs> right. And everything happened in one week. Wow. Um, the belts had been replaced probably about five or six years ago. The one in this elevator hadn't been replaced and it had just expanded and it wouldn't carry the load anymore. Right. Um, so we, we just, just cut it off short. And, um, so what happens is everything comes up the elevator, runs down this little chute here. In this chute there are a series of magnets. It's going to mm. catch any pieces of metal that are in, in there. Right. We don't want any metal going through into the rollers one little yeah. spark and all this dust just goes boom. Mm. Um, <clears throat> amazingly, the work, probably for a long time, it was the only thing that worked in here. <laughs> <laughs> um, all that barley is then dropped into this trommel. And this trommel has different gradings in it. It's separating dusts and husks. Um, what you get when you have a dried malt, you get all the husk and the shell starts peeling off and you're left with a lot of this. So we just collect all of that down the bottom in a bag down below. Then all the barley comes further along here and all these little holes are barley sized. Mm. So anything larger than a piece of barley like a mouse is not going to get past <laughs> through to the mill. All the mice will actually end up coming out the end here and running down this little this little chute <laughs> and collect it in a tray at the end. And you think, I'm, you think I am joking about mice, I am not. Now, right now we're standing directly above the mash tun. If you have a look in, you'll be able to see a mash down below. Four tips, once again. Yeah, rumour has it, these mills never break down. Really. They're pretty solid. It's probably one of the few things that has never really broken down for us. Um, belts come flying off, buckets fall off, but the mill has always run. Um, this mill is over a hundred years old and it's still running to this day. <coughs> um, so all the barley has been crushed through a couple of rollers inside and we then collect everything from there. So we collect the husk, we collect the flour and we collect the grist. I have a little example here of what we have when we mean past grist and flour. This is the final product. This is what's going to go into the mash tun. You can see the husk is in there. We have some white pieces of grist mm. and we have um, a little bit of flour. Not that dry, flowery, dusty smell anymore. We can't see the liquids are. Hot, actually hot. Hot water bottle. We're going to collect roughly around about three and a half to four tons of malt from the bins next door. We're then going to add water to it, back up 17,000 litres of water. We're looking for a mashing temperature of 63 and a half degrees Celsius. Um, to get that 63 and a half, we have to have a starting water and a hot liquor tap so around about 70 to 71 degrees Celsius. In the corner here, we have our underbath. 
So what we should have learned about is to be able to monitor the volume of water in the lifetime. In fact, see underneath the drain, so it's nice to see where the water level is. In an ideal world, uh, the underpart would be the same level as the marsh tank. Fresh one. So, right, 40 years old. Just a couple of weeks old on the other one. Just a series of plates where the water is on one side and cold water is on the other. It takes the temperature down to between 16 and 20 degrees C. And the reason why we want to bring it down is because the next process is to introduce uh, yeast. The, 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 Don't want to kill the yeast. Exactly. It dies at 30 degrees C. Right. So we take it well down so there's no chance of it uh, getting killed or dying. The washbacks themselves are made of uh, Scandinavian goatskin larch. Uh, manufactured on site. This one was manufactured on site, obviously, because we didn't open up the roofs. We were company from uh, up off. Once we get the fermentation, which is usually 110 hours or roughly five days, we end up with an alcohol, uh, which is a strong beer, uh, about 6.5 to 7 percent uh, percent ABV. It's alive. It's alive. Can I have another look in this one, Gordon? Of course, yeah. Any, anyone ever drop a camera in there? Frosty. <laughs> yeah. It scares me every day when you look over when the phone's in. Yeah. <laughs> this one, the previous one to this, was so old, the top had started crumbling away. Oh. <laughs> so we just cut the top off. But so when we cut the top off, it ended up about being this high. <laughs> right. about people falling in. So we raised the base so that it was the same height as all the rest of it. <laughs> when we finally got to get a new wash pack, the old one did another 10 years after we cut the top off. After we get this one installed, they forgot to lower the base part down again, so now we're really high. Now, 
New mic. Through the week, we collected everything that we made in one week. That then goes into a tank next door ready for filling tasks. And this is a sample of what goes into those tasks. Uh, it's 63.5. 63.5. It goes into the cat. 63.5. It's funky, funky fruit. Yeah. Mm. Mm. This way. It's like really, really, really strong candy. <laughs> oh, it's hot. Deep is not not giving up her her you make new make. <laughs> so this is our filling store. Uh, God, they said already we use bourbon and sherry casks. And with different sizes, we see up here just the barrel, hogshead, and the butt up the top. That's basically what we use. But there's various other barrels when you'll see in, in when we go to the warehouse quarter casks, firkins. Uh, so, so, the main ones we use are the bourbon and sherry. So, basically, the fill and store the intermediate receiver, we fill it up, and then we pump it to this receiver. This is the main receiver here. It comes in about 71% ABV. Gavin will come across, take a reading just to make sure it's just about that level and he'll water it down. The water comes from across the log. It will go through uh, charcoal filters before we put it into the, to actually water it down. We'll take it down to 63.5% ABV and then we start filling the casts. We use three casts. We use an A, B and a C. An E is a first fill for us. A B is a second fill, and a C I'll explain over in the warehouse what we do. So basically what happens is the stencil the casts here. And we'll, last last week as I don't know when, if we were in when we were in the bins, I said we were making long row last week. So long row, we've still got stuff to do. Long row 2022 JNA Mitchell. This will be the cast number 402, 403, 404. And then here we'll put the litres that's actually in the cask itself. These are all B casks, so they'll be a second fill for us. This half, just up here. <laughs> so you put it in, and once it gets to a certain level, it cuts off. There's no spillage, there's no chance of getting a wee, like a, a nothing at all. <laughs> so when they say fill to the, the required level, what they do beforehand, they'll take five at the start, five bottles at the start five barrels at the end of the run and what they'll do is they'll weigh the barrel, they'll fill the cask and then they'll weigh it again and if the weight's basically the same throughout the, the run, say 40, 50 casks, they'll know because the meter itself, this meter uh, does the litres but it can, apparently it can measure fresh air. So <laughs> they'll do a, a, weight, a, a weight and a litre test before the first and the last make sure that it's leveled out there, the actual run itself. And uh, is a full barrel like really full? It will probably be really full, yes. Like it's just the yeah, whatever? These, these are the, the actual uh, parts that make it cut off. Yeah, okay, so, so it's really as, really as max really, as you yeah. can go in. Then it's just back into the, into the pot here again. As I say, they'll roll them out, weigh them, and then they'll roll them out in front of the, the actual office there. What the truck will come and take them to what we'll get nine warehouses. We'll get three uh, rack and six dunnage warehouses. And I'll explain that when we go in here as well. Uh -huh. 